Forgive me for name dropping, but I've been out dancing with a star. Not just any old star, but Antonio Banderas. All in the name of research, naturally. In his latest movie, he plays a dancing instructor, and he's pretty convincing in real life too. After all, Antonio Banderas is nothing if not versatile. Latin lover, action hero, serious actor, king of the kids. He even managed to steal our hearts playing a cat, that fearless feline Puss in Boots from Shrek 2. And as for the dancing lesson, well, let's just say I voted myself out after the first round. All the way, all the way, that's it. Right. Now I'm you're walking, dancing. and now I'm dancing. And I don't feel like I'm dancing. We go in the, in the way back. No, but now move your hips a little bit. It's clear Antonio dancing. Banderas <laughs> is up for anything. Whether it's teaching me moves right. from his latest so film, here and there. <laughs> or taking risks on the big screen. From Tom Hanks's lover in Philadelphia to Angelina Jolie's lover in Original Sin. And then, of course, Zorro. <laughs> But it's the man behind the mask who is completely disarming. <laughs> that wonderful laugh know, but, uh, and the admission so far, he often uh, forgets you know, the people he works I, with as as can't help but charm you. I've been involved in 74 movies. I just see people on the street and I recognise them, but I don't know really where to put them. Yeah. And it's very embarrassing, you know. Yeah. Hi, how are you? And <laughs> suddenly he just say something so I can get a clue of where you were. Yeah. Oh man, that's Zorro, Zorro. Okay. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> okay. yeah, it's just that embarrassing. Be, that would be very hard. <laughs> but he's too much of a star to be forgotten. And after performing the tango in his new film, Take the Lead, he will long be remembered for his dancing. is based on a true story and Antonio plays Pierre Dulain, a dance teacher ridiculed for trying to get troubled New York kids on the straight and narrow by teaching them ballroom dancing. What kind of teacher are you? I teach uh, ballroom dancing. <laughs> no freaking way. And Think you to Sir With Love Meets Strictly ballroom, ballroom at a time when the world is fish. crazy for the foxtrot. Walk forward, everyone. And let me be safe. Right, you know, but, uh, Come on. Let's go. What you think about it? Like it. When you get into it, it's quite a trip. It's quite a trip. Because when you think about ballroom dancing, you don't think cool. You don't think trendy. No, no not anymore. It's, it's about trust. And, uh, it just um, develops uh, uh, feelings and, and parts of yourself that you didn't even know that you had. It's been interesting. I, I really loved it. It's hard to believe, but Antonio, who grew up wanting to be a professional soccer player, never trained to be a dancer. <laughs> Nor did I, obviously. <laughs> it goes without saying, I'll never be as quick on my feet as Antonio. But I've got to tell you, dancing with a real star is a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Sí, no antes. Before Hollywood, he was a big star in Spain. But it was the Oscar-nominated Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown that brought him to America, where he got signed up by an ambitious agent. And I never thought about this guy. But when I came back to Spain, he called me. He said, you've got to go to London. You have an interview with this guy. You're going to do a movie that called, called The Mambo Kings. I said, but I don't speak English. What I said to him that you do? I said, why did you say that? <laughs> I don't know how to speak the language. So I went to London and I sat in front of this guy. And he just talked and talked and talked for hours. And he was just there just saying, yes, yes, and of course. <laughs> and at the end, I said, I can do that. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yes, I am a musician. Did you always aspire to be a Hollywood star? No, 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 not at all. It was an accident. Everything that happens to me in America was an accident. <laughs> Mambo Kings was a minor hit, but it was Madonna's very public lusting after Antonio that made America take notice. Antonio Banderas is this Spanish actor that I've had a crush on for two years. I've got it all worked out in my head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Antonio fall madly in love with me. 
I want to know how much did you pay Madonna to say those things about you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to. <laughs> I didn't need to. It was, uh, she was uh, uh, surprising, I may say, at that time. I couldn't believe it. And one morning she called me in my, in my bedroom at the hotel. It was very early in the morning, and I thought that somebody was just posing a joke to me. You know, and I said, Where are you? Who are you really? I'm Madonna. Oh, come on. Uh, I'm Madonna. I, I want to see you. And, well, see me, what, what do you want? I've been wanting to meet Antonio for years. I finally get to meet him, and he's married. At that time, she was very outspoken, you know, she was all the time just talking a little bit like that. She was uh, breaking all the rules, and she was in the mood, and uh, and it was a kind of blueprint that <laughs> she invented it. <laughs> but I never felt like that. How can you claim you're our savior? When they would go on to star opposite one another in the musical Evita. God, you are so gorgeous, you know that? But it was another blonde, Melanie Griffith, Betty. who stole his heart when they met on set. Daddy Kerner. Our dad. It's really nice to meet you. I remember being in my trailer and looking through the window, you know, through the windows, just getting, see, seeing her just getting from the car to her trailer. Wow, she's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I just, um, wow, my tongue just got down to here. I said, whoa, yeah, like this lady. Whoa, I like this lady. <laughs> and she must have gone, whoa, I like this man. Well, yeah. Yeah, because we have been 11 years now practically saying the, the same thing. <laughs> practically saying the same thing. You still yeah. like each other. Yeah. Is it true that when you first spoke to your wife, so the very first time you spoke to her, you asked her how old she was? I was so nervous that it was the first question, question that came to my mind. So what smooth. I, what I'm, yes, I know. What I was know. her reaction? Her reaction was just laughter at the beginning. I said, how did you dare? Uh, and she says, 30, 37. <laughs> I said, thank you and sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're very lucky you got a second conversation. <laughs> right. You know, uh, yeah, it was a very weird situation. What made it weirder was that at the time, both were married to other people, making them perfect prey for the paparazzi. And it's never let up, even after 11 successful years of marriage. No, they were even cruel, but, but... You're still under a lot of scrutiny. I mean, if you, if you were to open a magazine, you know, today, you're married to a very paranoid, fragile, jealous woman. You're... Right. Yeah? Yeah, that's what the people may think. That's right. That's how Melanie is painted, isn't she? Right. Um, you're a Latin lover ready to fall for the next leading lady. Any, anybody with a skirt, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, if I am um, that guy that is reflected in the magazines, I will commit suicide. <laughs> I don't want to be that monster. I am not that guy. I never recognize myself in that. For someone constantly hounded, it came as a surprise when Melanie went public about her addiction to painkillers. It's a monster that's inside that you have to um, put it in its place. I consider that a um, beautiful thing and, uh, and an act of uh, courage in, in our days, and especially in the world that we live in, which uh, you know all of those things may use may be used against against you, you know, as a professional. And uh, but she just uh, was smart enough just to convert all of that in something positive, and I and I helped her, and I will continue doing so. You stood by her very much. Yeah, absolutely. These days, the Banderas and Griffith family often holidays in Malaga, Spain, where Antonio grew up. It was a very different place then, a fascist state ruled by the dictator Franco, where even performing in a play that was considered subversive was dangerous. And I remember going to school and singing fascist anthem every morning with my hand like this. Really? You're doing the salute like yeah. this? The whole thing, the whole deal, you know, it was a fascist country, that's the way they do. But I didn't know um, anything about the outside world. But is it true that as a 14-year-old you were arrested for performing Bertolt Brecht? That's correct. <laughs> that is correct, yes. That <laughs> was, uh, was in 1974? 75, I don't remember exactly the year, but I just remember looking at the wing of the theatre and see the shine of the helmets. <laughs> what the heck is that? And, uh, and they were everywhere. And so we finished and we got arrested. And we got <laughs> Nothing happened because, among other things, my father was a cop. <laughs> so I, I got to the police station and said, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know, you asked your boss. <laughs> and uh, so I got a double uh, punishment <laughs> from, from my dad father and from, and the, and from the police. 
Antonio won't describe himself as a rebel, but as someone who says what he thinks. So living in Los Angeles, where people rarely do, is especially difficult. We just bought a house in New York. I, I'm just trying to move to New York because I think it's the most European th city in America. I love to walk on the streets and uh, uh, I love to be, the people to be real, even to, if they insult you. In New York, they do that. <laughs> so you say that? Ah, human beings, <laughs> human beings, they're alive. <laughs> and here in Los Angeles, you feel a little bit like people are smiling at you and stamming your back in some way. Mm. So you don't trust a smile then? Uh, not always. Not always. I'd like to see if I can see behind that or beyond that. Be careful, senorita. There are dangerous men about. Antonio Banderas is considered by women around the world as chili red, Tabasco hot. But he's also found fame in family films. This was even before Shrek 2 was around, before, before Puss in Boots. Yeah, I hate that guy. You hate that guy? I hate that guy. <laughs> now ye auger, pray for mercy from Puss in Boots. People used to come to me and say, I love you in Zorro. Now they come to me, especially women, and say, I love your cat. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very sexy furball. Furball. <laughs> 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 with Antonio getting in touch with his feline side, Puss in Boots was the surprise star of Shrek 2, a film that made a billion dollars in the US and made many more laugh. Oh. The good news is there's more to come and Puss in Boots gets his own DVD movie. It's a pleasure and it actually makes me very proud uh, of myself, I may say, because I came to this country without knowing the language and the fact that they call me now just to use only my voice, it, that's a big step ahead. <laughs> that's nice. Back at dance class, in the arms of Antonio, I'd like to say I'm getting the hang of this. Two, one, two. But sadly, I'm still a long way from two. the tango. You're very kind. <laughs> You're very kind. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.